All right, joining us now, Greg, we are going to catch up with author of Boycott the Yankees. He's going to uh, fill us in on his book, give you the information on where you can purchase this book and really what it's all about. Very interesting. Greed in the game of baseball and all sports, really. We have Mike DeLucia joining us here on the Rodeo Linelli Show. Mike, how are you? I am doing well. How are you? I'm doing fantastic. Thanks for uh, catching up with us and taking the time and uh, looking forward to reading Boycott the Yankees and some of your ideas that you have going on. And we're going to get into some of the questions that we have as it pertains to your book, so you can kind of give the listeners a little bit more information on that. But the first things first, A Bronx Tale, best movie of all time? <laughs> it, was an, it was an awesome movie. I actually saw, um, I saw the live show, the one-man show, which uh, was really interesting once you've seen the, the whole film and then you, you see Chaz acting the entire thing out alone on the stage. It's really pretty cool. Well, Mike, let's get right into it. Why did you write this book? I think a lot of people look at the title. They say, you know, Boycott the Yankees, a call to action by a lifelong Yankees fan. What was the purpose of writing the book? Because I love the Yankees and because I love baseball. And my heart breaks when I think about what's happened to the Yankees and what's happened to America's favorite pastime. That innocence that that I had when I was growing up with baseball in the 60s and 70s in the Bronx, it was alive. And all the games that we played, all the different versions of baseball, like stickball and, you know, from stickball right up to baseball itself. You know, I was Mickey Mantle when I stepped up to the plate. Um, and that magic was there. In the same way that we collected baseball cards back then, they were valuable, but not because we could sell them at a later time, but because those guys were our heroes. Today, when you think of baseball, there's a coldness there. There's you think about money. I mean, let's let's be frank. You think about contracts, how much person this get, you know, how much this person's making, and so on and so forth. It's lost that. It's lost that innocence, and it's lost that that magic that we once had. And upset me. It really does. Well, Mike, let me ask you just to piggyback off of that. Does that maybe have more to do with a generational thing and how, I guess, economics and we have evolved technology wise and as a people? And then obviously the growth of the other sports that rival baseball. Does it have more to do with that? I, I get the nostalgia factor of, you know, we all used to play stickball or wiffle ball when we were kids. And. Now you don't even see kids going outside at all. They're all on tablets and video games and things like that. So is it more about the generational evolution and the, the kids being different, or is it more about the money, as you say? I think that it's really a combination of, of both things. Um, I think the fact that uh, parents can't bring their kids to the game as frequently as our parents, you know, from the other generations, used to be able to bring us to the game. You know, a lot of times it's, it's maybe, you know, once a year, you know, once a season, you know, you might be able to go to a game. And that creates a distance between, um, you know, uh, people and the actual the love of the game, um, the autograph situations. You know, it's another thing that separates the people and it, and it just creates this divide. Players aren't accessible the way that they used to be. When they built a new stadium, you, you can't even see the, the players walking in anymore. It, it's like they're these celebrities now. In the old days, they, were, you know, they would walk right into the park. They would talk with you. They would sign your autographs. And that's the bond that's being broken down. So it's, it's a combination. You know, it's, it's, it's all of these different factors. Again, the money is, is kind of making it uh, a lot distant. You know, right now, not frequenting the park the way we used to. The players are becoming more distant from the fans. And I'm hoping to bring a little bit of that back. If the uh, ticket prices were uh, really affordable and people were able to go to the game a lot more, I think that bond might come back a little bit. So, yeah, I think it's a combination of things. Mike DeLucia, author of Boycott the Yankees, a call to action by a lifelong Yankees fan. Mike, what is your goal with this project, with this book? I mean, is it just that? You're hoping people just boycott these games and hope that the, the owners come down with their ticket prices? And have you had any pushback from Yankees management or anybody from the Yankees? Okay. Um, first part, um, the goal is that it starts with the Yankees and that people across the country 
start to say, hey, look, you know, look what the Yankees, you know, play, uh, fans had a walkout. Um, you know, there's a protest. There's, there's people boycotting. Now it starts to happen across the country. It starts to build. Other player, other fans start to do this across the country. If that happens, Major League Baseball will have to take a look at it. Right now they do not. Um, everything is, is, is fine. And nobody's really complaining so much or it's whispers instead of big protests. So I'm hoping that it catches on. I just don't want it to be the Yankees. It's not just the Yankees. It's Major League Baseball. And I'm hoping from there it spreads to all sports because let's face it, fans bankroll the entire sports industry. Without our money, they cannot function. Advertisers are, advertisers are not going to pay all kinds of money for shrinking fan bases. Um, they, would, they would have to respond. So, you know, that's my ultimate goal. Start here because of the team I grew up with, the team I love, so it's most personal, you know, for me. And let it expand and grow and let, on social uh, media, let people join together and have walkouts. I will tell you a little story before I get into the other part about the pushback. Um, there was a, there's a team in uh, Liverpool and their soccer team, and the owner of the Red Sox bought into that um, franchise, raised the prices, and the fans organized and staged a walkout. 10,000 fans got up in the middle of the game, chanted. Um, they had a chant that I can't really say. And then they walked out of the stadium, and before the next home game, the prices were lowered. So it can be done. It can be done. Um, as far as pushback is concerned, no pushback yet. Um, I, I, I was interviewed by a newspaper who called uh, the Yankees and asked them what their opinion was about the book. And he said they, they wouldn't give, um, you know, any kind of a, of a response. But he was pretty sure they were aware of the book. So they're aware of it. So far, they have not contacted me. I mean, some some fans have... Uh, you know, have been, you know, negative about the whole thing. You know, there's, I mean, when you're dealing with people, there's sure. all different opinions out there. Um, there are some fans you just mentioned, you know, boycott the Yankees. The Yankees could do no wrong. They're gods. And that was probably me, you know, 10 or 15 years ago. Um, but uh, now, um, you know, again, most people I speak with are pretty on board with this. And it's just a question of me gathering a momentum and, and creating the first wave. Mike DeLucia, author of Boycott the Yankees, joining us here on the Rodeo Lanelli Show. Mike, you hit on something there that I want to touch on too, and this is kind of a two-parter for you, but you mentioned 10 or 15 years ago you may have fallen in that camp of, you know, you mentioned the Yankees and it's just blasphemy. Uh, first part is, does, obviously the Yankees have a rich history of success. The last 10 years or so has not been as prominent as or lived up to that Yankee standard, so to speak if you will. Mm -hmm. Does that play mm -hmm. into it at all? And the second part of the question is because most other franchises do not have the success and the brand notability of the New York Yankees. Um, mm -hmm. Myself, I grew up a Cleveland Indians fan. To this day, you can go to what used to be Jacobs Field, now Progressive Field, and you can get a ticket for 10 bucks or less to get into the game on game day. Mm -hmm. um, have you gotten any feedback from fans of other teams because – while it's unfortunate, that Yankee brand, that Yankee ticket is always going to be more expensive than the other teams in baseball. Okay. First part of the question, does it have anything to do with, with winning? Um, no, because the, um, it happened for me in 2009 when they won the World Series. Okay. When they opened up, when they opened up that new stadium. Because I, I, I always buy uh, seats in the bleacher section. That's, you know, I'm not a bleacher creature, um, Bleacher Creatures are just a brand of fan who they, they just buy tickets to every game. They're fanatical fans. When I went to the Yankees, the new Yankee Stadium, I wasn't happy about it. I didn't think we needed a new place. But I went, bought my, my bleacher seat, and I went out to the section where the Bleacher Creatures usually sit, and they, they weren't there. They moved the seats um, away from... Uh, they used to be right against the wall in right field. They moved them up and back, and they put nice cushy seats there so they could, um, you know, and it really, it, that angered me. 
so it, it, it really that might have been the beginning. I, I you know sometimes I try to think back about when did it actually happen, but that might have been the beginning for me because I was so distraught. I said, you mean to tell me that they built an empire with you know the bleachers being right here and now all of a sudden this piece of real estate is too good for the for the for the average fan to pay a couple of bucks to see the game, um, and then it started to kind of happen you know, really, really started to, to snowball after that. It has nothing to do with winning or losing. If the Yankees had a great team this year, I would still be just as upset. It might be harder for me to reach Yankees fans, though, because when people are happy, you know, they're, you know, they don't care. But sure. if, you know, so it, it's, you know, so really for me, it's not winning or losing. It's, it's the whole thing. Um, the second part of the question Yes, people have contacted me and said, you know, even Yankees fans, because, you know, a lot of Yankees fans go on summer road trips and they'll, you know, they'll visit the Yankees at different stadiums across the country. I just spoke actually now to um, the principal of my school. You know, I told her about, you know, she read the book over the summer and she said, you know, I went to see a game in California over the summer. And she said that we had phenomenal seats at uh, Dodger Stadium. Or she might have gone to Anaheim, I'm not sure. But she said those seats at Yankee Stadium were so out of reach, she could never afford it. Uh, I just spoke to somebody on Facebook a little while ago who said he paid, you know, he pays very little money for the seats that, that he frequents at, um, at his uh, fans, uh, you know, his team. So do other um, fans have to come on board here? Is that basically what you're asking? Um, you know, I'm not sure how that's going to play out. I, I don't, I, I'm not really sure, I guess. Uh, you know, I mean, certainly market teams like um, Boston and, um, you know, the Yankees and you know, a couple of other, you know, are going to really charge a lot more money. I'm not sure how that's going to translate across the country. Although people across the country that I've spoken to are still annoyed with the fact that, you know, players are asking for, you know, twenty five and thirty million dollars a year. There's a, there's a certain anger that's that's kind of there in that, you know, aspect of it. Well, and, I, and you know, you think it. Go ahead. I know. I I think you bring up an interesting point. And you know, as we're talking here, um, it, it just it, it occurs to me that I think we can get upset with the players and you know maybe the poster child for having this big ego is a guy like Robinson Cano, who I know you've talked about on your blog before the Yankees offer him a big contract 20 million a year he decides no and lo and behold somebody else is willing to pay that type of money do you fault the players Mike or do you fault the owners because boy I can ask for 25 million a year but that doesn't mean I'm going to get it I guess all it takes is one owner to act foolish and boy we've seen that over the years haven't we we have uh, Robinson Cano is a, is a good point. Um, the Yankees off from you know twenty five million a year for seven years. The part that really annoys me about Robinson Cano is is that he said the Yankees showed him no respect. That just blew my mind when when he said that. Does he have any idea how arrogant that sounds? We're not talking about. $25 million over the course of his career. So $25 million is $175 million. They disrespected me. It just when I hear things like that, it, it just really, really gets to me. So is it the players or the owners? Um, it's a combination, I guess. The players are just so greedy. They're asking for these amounts of money. The owners are then, you know, the owners. Owners are, are are just as guilty. They're they're playing this. I, I describe it in the book as you know this big game of, of of poker. You know they're you know and and the ones with the uh, I, you know I describe it as you know the the owners win some of the hands, but the players win every round because you know they're asking for these ridiculous well, amounts and, of money and, and they're getting it. And Mike, the the owners also too they threaten communities if they don't get a new stadium with taxpayer dollars of leaving. We've seen that multiple times, and it's been proven that a new stadium doesn't necessarily do great things for the economy. So not only are the owners overpaying for athletes, as you depicted in your book, but they're also forcing everyday people to fund their own arena with taxpayer dollars. I mean... I, I think the owners are a big problem, and, and I think, you know, look at what's happening with Miami, the Miami Marlins. You know, a couple of years ago, they go out and get all these free agents, then halfway through the season, 
they get rid of everybody, and they're also funding a new stadium with taxpayer dollars in a in a city where it's been proven people don't go to watch baseball. I, I just I think the owners are a big problem with all of this. You're right. They are. They are a big problem. Um, you know, in the old days, in the days of the reserve cl- uh, reserve clause before free agency, the owners, you know, were like kings. They 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 own the players' rights to play baseball. And and that to me is what created free agency. It, it's I guess it's human nature. If you have you know money and power, you want more money and power. And um, it, well, I, Major League Baseball would have to step in. And again, the only way they're going to step in is if the fans speak out. Major League Baseball would have to step in and make certain rules. I mean, they they've made certain rules like well, if you go over the salary cap, then you have to pay out X amount of dollars. And that seems un-American, but you know what? They, they're able to get away with it. They should turn around to me. They should turn around and say, make certain rules about what you just you know spoke about as far as um, you know new stadiums it, it, and as far as ticket prices. I think that Major League Baseball should, should set ticket prices. You know they start at five bucks and they max out at forty five bucks. Those are your best seats, and you know certain percentage of the stadium could be used for corporate you know boxes. You can charge whatever you want for for that, but. The average fan for the person who's not a corporation, you know, they don't pay more than like 40, 45 bucks for, for, for a seat. Mike Delusha, author of Boycott the Yankees. Mike, before we go, um, I also want to get the information again out to the people of where to get your book, where they can find it. But are there any players who have held on to your to their dignity? Like any players that you look at them, and, you know, they, they do what's right for the game, for the fans, things of that nature. And then also let, let people know again where all they can find um, your book, your information, website, all that stuff. Um, there are some players who have held on to their dignity. Um, Paul O'Neill, uh, as a Yankee, to me, he was the the best Yankee of the last dynasty. And he walked into the owner's office and he said, I want to play here. And he had been only, I want to retire as a Yankee. And he went and he settled for millions of dollars, but not, all of the millions of dollars he could have squeezed out of the Yankees if he had gone into free agency and started this media circus. He made millions, but not all the millions that he could have made. And I have a lot of respect for somebody like him. Um, Mike Trout is another one. He signed for $144 million. He could have made a lot more money if, if he had gone the whole media circus and put himself up for bid and, you know, fought with everybody and turned. He didn't. He was happy playing where he was playing in Anaheim. He wanted to stay there. $144 million, uh, that's enough to, to, to live on in a, in a couple of lifetimes. So I have a lot of respect for people like that. It's, it's about, I want to play here. I like it here. You're paying me a great salary. I'll stay. Um, you could find out more about the book and hopefully read the book. It's if anybody orders it through boycottthe uh, I personally fulfill those um, those orders and I autograph them for you. If it goes through Amazon.com, um, they just take care of all that and they send it out to you. And I don't even know who buys it, you know, so I can't obviously autograph it for them. But I do like that connection uh, with people who want to read the book. The book is 9.99. And you, there's also a petition um, at Boycott the Yankees that you can sign. There's also that clip I showed you. I, I talked to you about uh, the Liverpool. I put that clip on there. Um, so at BoycottTheYankees.com, pick up the book and sign a petition. And Mike, we appreciate the time. I look forward to getting my copy in and, and reading the, the book. And uh, we look forward to following the progress of this uh, movement you're trying to start and seeing where it ends up. And hopefully we can catch up again soon. Thanks so much. I appreciate it. Uh-huh.